He is the one who has broken records, put the United States uh, when it comes to competitive racing on the map. Your name is? Mike, uh, Mike Annis. Mike Annis, yes, guys, you already know. If, if you don't know, now you know. He is the person that everybody wants some form of a bloodline. Why do you think that is? Why does everybody want your birds? Because they win. I think most of the top lofts in this country that have won big races, you're going to find GFL birds somewhere in the pedigree. Even in Europe, you can go back to a lot of the top lofts. My birds have done good for many fans years in Europe. These are birds that you actually have at home that you're breeding, right. that you're sending out to, to, to other I, countries. I breed all my birds from home and I send them to all the international races and I've been very, uh, very successful at it. Speaking of success, um, success has is, is definitely been your middle name. You've won the million dollar race three different times. I won the uh, South Africa million dollar race first place by 15 minutes and then I won the Victoria Falls. I was first and third, two birds on a drop. Not and that. then two years ago I ended up winning Pattaya and I won that by 13 seconds. It's the biggest race in the world. Uh, all the big lofts go to Pattaya. You attribute a lot of your success to being able to pick out the best of the best. What is it that you're able to see in a pigeon that most people can't really see? Can you share that with us? You know, I've been asked that hundreds of times. It's a very hard question to answer and be honest with you. It's a, it's a, it's a form of a gift, probably. I flew in Europe back in the 1995, 96, 97. I had my own loft there. I was able to go in lofts and there could be 150 birds in the coop and pick out their best bird within five minutes. I've done that several times. I believe there are very few good pigeons and you have to look for the one that's the best. You buy the best you can afford. You make the best to the best and you have your best chances. The most important thing is the winner and then the second closest thing would be the parents to the winner it's quicker to buy the winner it's already proven because if you look at any sport look at michael jordan he had seven brothers or whatever none of them were as good as him so the winners are the winners so i i only look for the best if you want to stay up in the time and you want to beat these big time players you have to go with the best you can afford one loft race is, is something that's become very big here in the united states what is your thoughts of the one loft racing here in the u.s about 15 years ago i said that Pigeon sport's going to go to one loft racing, and it has. Without one loft races, we have no sport. Club races are going to close up eventually. It's hard to get people to get along. So one loft races, you could breed your pigeons, send them to the race, compete against the big lofts, and you can watch them on the internet. You can go to the race if you wish. It's a great time. Oh, people yeah. get along good at the races. It's good for the sport, but if one loft races would end, the sport would end. If you ask me, what do I look for uh, when I choose a pigeon? I like to look at the head for some reason. It tells me a lot. And then I also like to handle the bird. And it has to be very buoyant. It has to weigh nothing like a balloon, okay? Just like a balloon. It has to have good muscle. I like a one-pin tail. I like a back that's straight or a little bit down. But uh, I don't like big pigeons. I don't like deep keel pigeons. They have to be uniform. And then the most important thing is genetics. If the bird isn't down from winners, it ain't going to be any good. Okay, so pedigree is very important. Pedigree is very important. And as far as eye sign goes, if the eyes are like the ones that were winning, okay, like if you go back to the Jansen brothers, most of their winners had like gravel or violet eyes. And with all their top birds, I knew exactly what they needed, what they had. If you want something off a winner, you want to buy a child or a brother or sister that looks like the winner. You don't buy something totally different. When the winner was medium, you don't buy a big bird. Big bird right, because so there's a lot of little things there. you got to look at. Lastly, because we're going to be starting soon, what other lines uh, or names of birds have you been successful with? Uh, we got Starboy now that bred Miss Debbie. And uh, then I have uh, Night Jewel. Night Jewel's a full sister to Night Angel, which won a million dollar race by 16 minutes. So Night Jewel bred Miss Debbie, which was first place in, in Pattaya. And then it also bred the sixth place bird in Pattaya the year before, only losing by three seconds. So the line to look out for right now in this modern day, you would recommend uh, from you would be? I, I think the Starboy, Wolverine for sure, it'll be around for the rest of our lives. Night Angel is really good. Night Jewel is very good i'm always looking for something special looking i never stop you, you cannot stop if you think you have the best you'll get beat eventually so every year i bring in some new birds i always look for the best i cross them to my best and i send them to some races and see how they but, perform uh, and if they do well fine if they don't then uh, they have to go they but go. you have to give them two or three years so if they don't perform that one year you still give them a break always that's fair that's fair that's as long that's as you enough. like the bird if the bird is bred well handles well looks like what i want then i have to give it at least two or three years and then you got to look at another thing sometimes it's the handler's fault sometimes it's the weather's fault if they let them go and the storm comes up and the first bunch gets lost you think your bird's no good but it, it wasn't your bird's fault some people jump the gun 
done too quick. If you like the bird and it's bred good and the genetics are good, then uh, give them a try. They're going to have their bad days and they're going to have their good, good days. days. If their bad day is the day of the final race, well, it ain't the bird's fault. Well, they had a bad day. We just got to give them another Common chance. Common sense. Common sense is, is. plays a big role. Hey, thank you for your jewels, man. I really want to thank you for doing that and helping the new flyers out there understand a little bit more about pigeons, one loft racing, and what you actually go for when you're looking for a pigeon. I think all those things are, are really important. So I want to say keep winning those races. I mean, yep. I hope maybe one day I can be somebody like you, you know, just keep trying and keep investing. I think it's all about an investment. Have to invest. You always got to keep your eyes and ears open. Take care of your birds. Don't overcrowd. You don't need a lot of birds you'll have better results with less pigeons if they're good than a lot of pigeons that are average i'll go to a loft and there might be 10 really good birds but i always just want the best one that's yeah. why he's the winner you gotta try you gotta try hard but stay in the sport it's a good sport wish you all the best and take care and if i can help you in any way just ask that's it mike gannis guys don't forget his name he's changed the game in the united states he's brought in the best bloodline the best pedigrees you've ever heard of if they want to contact you in regards to purchasing one of your birds how could they do that probably the best way is by email so can you, what, at att.net all right you guys heard it first gannis at yeah. att.net .net. you guys heard it first from the one and only guys the celebrity the one that keeps doing it each in every year that's right it was a pleasure oh thank you thank you for everything thank you. all right you take care of stuff thank you Thanks.